One new thing that I've been making are these uh, friction folders, and the design isn't that much different from the original uh, that I have in um, one of my previous videos, but this is actually made from a much thicker gauge aluminum, and it's still bent into a U-shape. Now this thicker aluminum allows me to uh, put a much deeper texture into the surface, and uh, I mostly do this with hammer work. So it starts out flat, and then I use a hammer to uh, put in any sort of design that I want. This one is just kind of a cross hatching with a very small cross peen hammer. Because this aluminum is so thick, I actually have to kind of put a little bit of a bevel on the sides because I want to knock those 90 degree corners off. So this knife is kind of like a, I would describe it as a Spanish folding knife. Kind of looks, uh, has that pistol grip handle you can grab like so. Has a really big belly to it. I also have these little, uh, I think these, this is a 301 stainless. It's actually a stainless that's not heat treatable yet. The stainless is put through some sort of rollers that kind of uh, work harden and to make it springy, so. Has some good retention, kind of stays there. It's riveted onto the blade, so you can't change the side that it's on. This is one that I've been carrying around for a little bit. The uh, texture is made by using the uh, corner of a hammer. And you'll notice that the pocket clip on this one is on the other side, so it is actually in my palm when it's opened up. And Honestly, it's kind of hit and miss with the pocket clips that I'm making. It starts out as flat stock and I bend it up and then grind out the excess. And um, I think that this one, I really don't feel the, the clip at all here. And the, uh, the blade shape of this one is more like an Anglo-Saxon knife, you know, a sax, that kind of deal. Um, in my process, I kind of cut it off of the main bar stock right here, and the more uh, shallow or the, the greater the angle of the cut, um, it kind of makes the tip a little bit more pointy. Or I could cut it at a 90 degree angle and make it into kind of a cleaver type knife, which those are pretty popular nowadays. Now this is a funny texture. That's just my logo stamped in it over and over again. That was a pretty fun blade to make. That was an old, some old letter punches. That's just an ampersand all, <laughs> all over. That one's kind of funny. It also makes it really grippy feeling. You know, it's not kind of a, a sandpaper grip, but uh, still feels good. And not all of my blades have um, clips on them. Here's a smaller one. And uh, really small, this is kind of like a, you know, barely fit in your pocket. Real, ideally, this probably should have a pocket clip on it, um, but I kind of like the, how small this blade is and kind of fills your hand. I can still get my pinky on there. It's The handle's still long enough um, to fully fit my hand. This would be perfect, you know, for a little fruit knife or just an all-around utility knife. You could kind of uh, whittle with it. I also did some experiments with powder coating. My neighbor helped me out with this. And I'd say that um, overall the powder coating worked pretty well. Um, 
This is some sort of bronze powder coat where it has real bronze flakes inside. So in order to keep the bronze from oxidizing and kind of turning darker, uh, there was a bronze coat and then a clear coat after it. So this one is uh, without a pocket clip. It still has, you know, still U-shaped handle. It actually feels plasticky. It doesn't really feel like aluminum at all because um, you don't have the same thermal conductivity. So this is actually a little bit better uh, if it's really cold outside. But um, the only thing about that is that if you're outside and you have this in your pocket, chances are this knife handle is going to be as warm as you when you take it out and it's going to be still pretty comfy even in, uh, in very cold weather. It's just if it was in your backpack and, uh, and you take it out of your backpack then it would be pretty icy and uncomfortable. So this is one of my favorite that I've made so far. Um, it is a... Uh, the texture was made with an old hammer eye punch. So all that kind of, you know, very small texture in each one of those dents, that's just from the hammer eye punch getting all rusty and pitted. And then it kind of leaves its mark in the aluminum. I think that looks really nice. So the blade shape is kind of like, a, I guess, kind of a trailing point looking blade. I really like the, uh, the kind of feel of this one. It's kind of a, you know, a classic, kind of a, a classic knife. It feels like it should be a, a fixed blade with the blade shape and the handle shape and all. It kind of creates a little bit of an S shape, just pleasing to the eye. And this is a, another small knife. I think this this one is a little bit better executed than um, that tiny knife before. It actually has a pocket clip so it doesn't get lost in your pocket. And has a nice smooth action. I think this is kind of the ideal size pocket knife. It's not too big. Um, you can kind of get your thumb up onto it or or holding it like this. Usually whenever I do this, it's for opening up a box because the tip is already there and um, and when you kind of trot start to cut a box, your finger stops the blade from going any further past that cardboard. I think these are pretty safe once you know how to use them. I would always recommend closing these with two hands, but whenever I open them, I kind of use the one thumb thing and then um, and then a little three-step closing procedure where I start to close it with my thumb but the tang collides with uh, my you know my hand and stops it from going any further and then I flip it around and now my index fingers under the the tang so then I can kind of flip it out put my thumb over it and then close it or sometimes you don't need to use the index. With this one, it's just kind of open, one, and close. This is another small knife that I made that um, it's made completely from a file. Um, my original intention was to make this kind of an everyday carry knife, uh, but I kind of ground really high on it and made it super thin. And I realized that this is actually a really good steak knife. And I'm planning on making a fork that'll go along with it. And then a sheath. You can see the, uh, the file texture. And the little finger choil has been mushroomed out and opened up. So it's a little bit less grating on your index finger. I like how the, uh, the texture warps as it's forged. It kind of comes to a little point, you know. It creates that S shape that I really love. It's flowy, 
elegant. This one right here is my tra trailing point knife. It's a uh, it's one of my wedge tenon knives, so the whole thing can kind of come apart. The butt plate and the guard are both made of stainless that um, I didn't actually drill any of it. I just did hot work and um, punched, the, punched the holes while it was hot and then um, kind of drifted them up onto the shoulders of the blade. Here's the blade. It has the uh, kind of a diamond cross section. It uh, has the uh, the back bevel that I really like to do with with most of my knives. The forge finish kind of gives that contrast between the uh, the light and the dark. Of course, it has my uh, logo on it. Although I think I misstamped it and then you know slightly misstamped on there it has kind of like that uh japanese inspired peaked spine i like to do that on a lot of knives let's see here if i can get it to focus yeah it's kind of a peaked spine there the cross section of the or the i guess the Handle width kind of swells in the middle, the way I like it. And it has this kind of area for your, um, I don't know what this kind of muscle is called on the side of your hand, you know, I guess for your pinky. I'm really not sure. But it kind of rests easily in there and then has the palm swell that kind of hugs your hand. The, uh, the black wood here, or kind of a you know, really dark brown, is called Zircote, and the very middle is Paduk. The handle was uh, kind of glued all together as one brick, or one block, and then I drilled through it, broached it, and then bedded it with uh, epoxy putty to uh, kind of keep the handle snug on the tang, that way it's not just the the pressure alone from the uh, from the wedge tenon on the end holding it together and this is a little unique um, sheath design that I have here where it's adjustable both um, for both the right and left hand side and it's uh, for both horizontal and vertical carry so there's this kind of loop that goes all the way around and each side of the loop has a hole in it. And in those holes, the, uh, let's see, it's kind of hard to get out here. Inside the holes, this little button goes inside there, and you can kind of choose which side you want to carry this, uh, this blade on. And you can use this loop itself and put a belt through it that way and carry it horizontally. I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's always good to have that option there. And, you know, I think that's kind of the way that I've been making a lot of my sheaths nowadays. So let's see that one on this side. So to kind of put it back in, all you have to do is kind of bring it to the hole there and then press it down and then the little button pops through and it's just as tough as ever. So I'll demonstrate taking this apart. Pretty much the uh, the way that I find out the side to punch, um, to punch out is uh, it, it either looks like the smallest side or it's chamfered. So this side has a slight chamfer on the bottom, whereas this side is more or less kind of flush with the rest of the butt plate. So I use something just simple, you know, you can use pretty much anything. I just use a little threaded bolt. And then you kind of wrap your fingers around it with your uh, thumb and index holding it right on top of the, um, right on top of the pin. And then I give it, you know, 
few good taps. It doesn't seem like it takes a lot of energy to uh, punch this out, but I mean with regular use, you're using it this way, kind of in, in this direction, not this direction. So unless you're holding the knife by the blade and hammering it on something, uh, the chances of this little pin coming out aren't very high. So here is the bolster. You can see that there's still forge finish on the end and the hole, it wasn't file at all. That was just from doing hot work and uh, putting a punch through it. And now for the handle. I'm, I'm doing this with it inside the sheath, by the way, and that's, that's crucial because uh, you do not want to be holding it by the blade. And now, um, sometimes the handle is like really tight on here. So I give it a couple taps and then the handle comes right off. That's the bedded tang epoxy, kind of like that little epoxy you can look, see in the very center. That's where the drill hole was, and then I open it out from there. And then I leave this more or less open because I mostly make contact kind of in that section. So at this point, I can just grab it and take the whole blade out and the guard comes out and of course the front of the guard is fully forge finished and there is um, you know you can you might be able to see the little shoulder marks the shoulders go pretty deep through the um, through the guard and then the blade itself I usually keep the tang at kind of a, just a 36 grit or something. I kind of um, make sure that this area is the widest part, or the thickest part rather, of the whole blade. So to assemble, it's pretty simple. It's almost like a Japanese Tonto because that's what I base this design on. Whereas Japanese Tonto, the peg goes in here. I just figured I could you know, do this kind of compression sandwich and uh, put the peg there instead and make it out of high carbon steel. You know, I used to make the, the wedges out of low carbon steel and what ended up happening is that this kind of sharp 90 degree angle inside of the uh, hole here ended up shaving that softer steel off. So, I kind of had to do that, make it out of uh, high carbon steel, so there. And then got to remember the, the side that this went on. The easiest way to do it is to kind of look at the, look at the little U shape that's formed on the, um, on the butt plate, put it in, and then Kind of keep it at an angle so you're not um, you're not kind of risking uh, hitting the handle. There we go. Simple as that. Now the knife is completely solid, put together, and it's ready to keep on using. This next knife is pretty much the drop point version of the one that was shown before. It's still the wedge tenon construction, has the stainless guard butt plate. Uh, the handle is different. Instead of having that kind of swoop down there, it's more of like kind of a flared out design at the end. It's almost like the uh, kind of the opposite shape handle. Um, this is Paduk and walnut rather than having zircote on the outside and then paduk on the inside. It's just paduk and walnut. So the blade is a lot wider than the um, than the trailing point, but it still kind of has the same 
theme to it with the forge finish spine and the little, um, you know, uh, double bevel spine as well, kind of at the very top. It has two little bevels. The uh, very front of the guard is still is still um, forge finished like that, and then the butt plate is still forge finished as well. Yeah, overall, this one is very um, very comfy to hold in hand. It's kind of an all-around good camp knife, good for chopping, that kind of thing. I made it very thin too, so uh, it'll it'll slice through some meat as well as slice through some, uh, or as well as a uh, sink into wood. So that's always good. And this one kind of has a more traditional Western pattern, just a little border around the sheath with the same kind of belt hookup thing. I'm not going to take this one apart because it basically looks the same as the other one. This one is uh, um, a recurve knife that I was kind of experimenting with. You know, recurves, they're, uh, I don't think that they're the most useful blade shape, but they do look pretty cool. Um, because, I mean, sharpening the inside of these is pretty hard when all you have are flat sharpening stones. So it was mostly sharpened on the belt, but um, I have a, a leather strop and all that, so I got it screaming sharp on that too. Yeah, I should probably be uh, cutting paper because that's like the etiquette, whatever it is, on YouTube. Alright, back with some paper to cut because I guess, I guess it's kind of a good register of how sharp a knife is, you know, if it just kind of glides through. Um, also, the, uh, the reverse edge is sharpened too. I think, I don't know if this is... Yeah, that's shaving sharp as well. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like a, I guess, a fighting knife, kind of fighting oriented. Uh, this is also, um, th this is uh, also stainless for the butt plate and bolster. And the wood is um, a dyed and stabilized maple that I got from my friend, uh, Louis Lavenda. This is the butt plate here, forge finished. It's like the others and the bolster. Yeah, this one kind of has like a little square shape, you know, on the handle right there, kind of like a, almost almost like a facet, I guess. It's not very noticeable in the hand. Feels pretty good. I like to get my hands, uh, I mean, uh, handles kind of lightweight. Um, you know, this one has a lot of weight taken out of it from that curve on the inside, but it still kind of feels good in the hand. The, uh, the sheath is kind of plain, but the only thing uh, that's different, or two things that are different, is that it has a snap, a little snap here. And also it has this secondary kind of loop on both sides, and that's for a uh, shoulder holster mechanism, so it kind of works the same way as the, uh, um, the, the belt loop where it kind of fits in the top here so that the sheath can be kind of held upside down and um, then kind of put kind of where your armpit is or on the front of your chest. I have a little leather loop, you know, strap system uh, set up, but I still need to kind of fine tune it. I'm not quite there yet. So yeah, this is, this is a really nice one. I like it. Goes in with some friction so it won't fall out, but I still want to put that there because if it's being carried upside down, who knows, kind of like somebody's gonna drag their finger across the handle. I don't, I don't know. That's always a good safety precaution to have. Here's some of this paper. So we can cut some more, I guess. Now here is a pretty pink knife. My sister kind of uh, 
designed the little flower bits to put on it and uh, the area where the belt loop goes in is also kind of a, a little flower there. So when the button goes through, it's like that. This is also, uh, I think, uh, yeah, this is also stainless for the uh, bolsters and butt plate. Um, it's kind of just an all-around camp knife. I got this wood at, um, actually, the Zircote and this pink stuff at a um, Kling Spore wood shop for pretty cheap, so that was always a, that's always a good buy. Um, there's not much else to say about this. It's just a kind of all-around comfy handle. You won't lose it in the woods because it has a that pink handle, kind of like how when I sculpted it, the grain kind of flows along with everything. This is a skinning knife I made. Uh, I'm not too happy with the sheath because this is my first time doing any sort of leather tooling. I tried to do some like scrolls or nautilus or whatever this is, but it just ended up looking kind of bad. So I'll redo the sheath on this one. Thankfully I can keep the belt loop and just attach it to the new one. So here is the blade. And there's a lot of oil on it. Didn't realize I put that much. Ugh. Okay, um, that's the blade. Has a little copper, uh, copper guard. This is made from the same piece of uh, maple as this fighter knife. And there is a little carbon fiber pin in the side here. It's just kind of domed. It's actually a press fit through. Here's one, um, kind of like a, another version of that knife, I guess, kind of in the same size range. Uh, I like the tooling on this one better. I think uh, this is kind of inspired by Pariah knives, I think, because he does like the little I guess, wheat grain pattern. I don't know what you would call that. It's just kind of a simple modern pattern. Let's see here. The handle is um, dyed and stabilized redwood. It kind of has those little eyes in it. Copper guard and a carbon fiber pin, just like the other ones. It's not really meant to be taken apart or anything. And uh, this one was made from a file, just like the other one. And these are a couple of um, little belt knives, just to be worn on the belt, used from time to time. One of these, I think, yeah, this one, is uh, more for like uh, leather carving or, um, or wood marking, because it has a kind of a hollow on one side and then flat on the other, which makes it extremely sharp and, and thin towards the tip. So this one is a little bit more of an all-rounder. Um, this is just kind of a, a knife that you can quickly take out and, and use, and it's very durable because it's all one piece. Forge scale finish, so forge scale kind of provides a little bit of protection against the elements naturally. Yeah, it's a nice little little package there. Just put it on your hip and you're good to go. This is my, um, I call it the Turkish Assassin. <laughs> it's um, uh, kind of a, my first Damascus blade. Before I went on Forged and Fire, I forged my first Damascus blade, but that did not prepare me for the jelly roll that was actually on the show. Um, this is a ladder pattern Damascus blade. It's um, 1084 steel, uh, let's see, 1084, 15 and 20, and wrought iron. And uh, it's actually, it was actually more common um, to uh, include low carbon steel in Damascus, uh, I guess, in the 70s. And uh, that's kind of when my mentor, Robert, was learning blacksmithing. And uh, this is kind of uh, the uh, um, pommel is based on like a minaret and here I did kind of my first um, my first work on a pitch bowl and engraving. I haven't used the pitch bowl since but um, I plan to in the future.
because that was pretty fun to do. The handle is some uh, walnut that my mentor um, uh, fell with, uh, with his dad who knows how long ago. And the, the fittings are all brass. It's a really nice look to have a, you know, dark wood and brass and, uh, you know, a little, you know, a soldered, a soldered, uh, I guess it's called a chape, right? As well as the, the cap. I guess, uh, um, I forgot what that was called, this piece. But the, um, the scabbard is leather lined, so it kind of has some retention inside uh, when it's uh, inserted. So kind of about there, it starts to uh, kind of get some friction, and then it's inserted all the way. And then you have a nice little, um, you know, kind of like a Middle Eastern, Mediterranean looking fighting knife. You know, I figure, like, you know, I picture something like this being used in, um, you know, the Game of Thrones uh, universe in, like, Dorne, something like that. I really like this. It's just, like, it just feels like the perfect kind of uh, fighting knife. It was inspired by uh, Yadagan, which is a Turkish, um, a Turkish sword. So this has kind of the same shape of a Turkish sword, but um, it's uh, shrunk down. Yeah. Last but not least, need to zoom out for this one. There we go. I have a a sword here. It's um, I I, I like to call it the Waki Puko. I guess this doesn't really roll off the tongue. But it's essentially like a wakizashi and a puko combined because uh, pretty much the only reason why I say that is because I managed to keep the the um, forge finish on the whole length of the blade. You know, so it, it kind of like if you hold it like this, it looks like you're holding a puko, but it's really a huge blade. And um, I guess it would be a wakizashi, which is a short sword. Uh, the habaki, of course, is the the most, uh, uh, most difficult part to make, and then I think this is, uh, forgot what this construction is called when it doesn't have a, an actual guard, it's just kind of, the guard is more or less flush with the handle. The scabbard is a piece of bamboo flooring, or two pieces of bamboo flooring, that um, have been glued together and then carved, of course, and then it's uh, coated with charcoal powder and lacquer, and it kind of creates a little pebble texture. It almost looks like a truck bedding. It has a little uh, um, attachment here for a sash when it's put into the belt. Yeah, this one was, was, uh, is pretty fun to swing around. The uh, handle was made by um, AK Designs, uh, it is a, um, I guess some sort of burl. I don't know what type of burl this is, but then he puts it in a mold and then fills it with um, resin, and it kind of looks really nice. It looks kind of a groovy, <laughs> groovy looking handle material, and it feels really good in hand. This blade actually um, had quite a bit of a curve to it, um, and I wasn't expecting an oil quench to, um, to uh, take out that much curve, but it actually, it almost made the blade look a little bit recurve, <laughs> you know, from, uh, from oil quench, because uh, when you quench in water, it kind of raises up, uh, or it, uh, it increases the curvature, and then when you quench it in oil, for the most part, it decreases in curvature and kind of bends that way. Um, so. Yeah, it kind of counteracted that curvature that I originally put on it. So it's more or less a straight blade with a handle that is kind of upturned, which it actually makes for a, kind of a good feel uh, when you're slicing with it because the, the blade is always kind of a little bit backwards, so you're not striking um, 
perfectly perpendicular to the target. Yeah. It's just a belt finish on this one. It doesn't really have any spectac uh, spectacular hamon. It was just a straight hamon. This is a piece of 1095 round bar that I forged, um, forged out into this. The tang goes about to there, I believe. Yeah. About three uh, or two thirds of the, of the handle's length kind of goes down to there. Um, yeah, that's about it. And that was the last knife, I guess, last knife I wanted to show you, really. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed some part of that. Uh, you can leave a comment and let me know what you thought, you know, what you liked, what you didn't like, or, you know, what I can improve on in general. So, uh, all right, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.